been doing some solo work since 2011, and uh, this particular piece evolved from a trip that I took uh, last year to Nevada, and was really inspired by the desert, and so I wanted to make a, a piece of music that was sort of kind of an ode to the, the extreme, the extremity of the desert, and that, you know, there's a certain sort of feeling there that's really interesting to me, and uh, the stuff that I do is kind of like, imagine the Dead Man soundtrack through a swan's filter, you know, it's, it's big, it's abrasive, it's like Neil Young on, you know, crack, <laughs> you know, it's, it's huge. Uh, <clears throat> but that's basically how that came about. I, I recorded a tape, uh, Daniel Menchie engineered it, he's kind of a noise legend in Portland. And then uh, earlier this year I started performing locally some shows with this project. And when the Crown situation came up it was such late notice that we really couldn't, mm -hmm. you know, contact other bands to fill in for it. So I was... Yeah, so the or the book our booking agent was asked me if I would do it, and I was like, well, okay, you know, I'll give it a shot. I don't know if people will like it or not, but you know. the EPs have always been very helpful as a you know a sort of small space in which we can experiment and try new things that we maybe wouldn't do um, at the length of a full length you know because EPs just by their nature are minor statements right they don't signal like I mean some people I think misinterpret it as a signal for some major reinvention of the sound but really it's just something for us to indulge in to play with um, certainly they inspire where we might go, but they're meant to be minor statements. Like, you would never do a complete folk full length, I don't think. I don't, we would never do some sort of post-rocky, noisy rock sort of full length either. Um, so they're really just there as minor statements, as personal indulgences as musicians. And certainly they inform the longer form work, but they're never an indication of what's to come necessarily. <coughs> well, that was part of the experiment. We, it was the first time we'd ever just sat down as a band and just spontaneously yeah. wrote a song. That was a concept that came about actually at the Frankfurt Airport on our way back from Italy or uh, Israel. Right. So, uh, you know, um, but I mean, that that essentially was our our black EP. Yeah. You know, um, a lot of people keep asking us if we're going to do a black EP, and I, I always respond with, "We already did it." You know. So, uh, you know, but yeah, the the spontaneity was part of that that process. Yeah. I think we want to experiment with a different approach of, of, of recording live, rehearsing something live. We've never really done it like the way before. And so that was a nice opportunity to sort of play with that. Because then we did do that for The Serpent. The Serpent was recorded much the same way the Faust team was. So, you know, it's like a test. Presently. Yeah, I mean, at the end of the day, really, the, the full-length EP, full-length EP, full-length EP, was just coincidental. It was never okay. absolutely like planned out that way. I think it just kind of yeah. happened over time, and we started noticing that that was what was happening. Um, so there's no current plans to do an EP. Um, I've demoed some new material, you know. I mean, I'd like to see us get a full-length out sooner than four years. Maybe yeah. Maybe three. <laughs> maybe three, at least three. three. Honestly, I think four. the four-year plan yeah. is kind of... But it's Shitty. not like intentional, it just happens. No, no. We don't, you know, because we, we all, a lot of us, most of us have full-time lives outside the band, families and things like this and other things we do, so Plus, a lot of, that's much more, pra it's more of a practical thing. Plus two members live far away. Yeah, we're split up <clears throat> across the country. always a possibility in the future. Um, one thing I'd actually like to experiment with is short songs, like try to actually have a five minute song that feels like an eight minute track because... At least we gestured toward that with the last one. We kind of did, yeah. But yeah, I'd yeah, be interested to see what we can do with a shorter song. It's kind of like when Rush got to that point where, 
you know, they were so, they became such a progressive rock band that yeah. they were influencing themselves, you know, so they decided to minimize yeah. their tracks and then, you know, and that was Permanent Waves. I guess that's kind of the thing is we, we haven't made a Permanent Waves album, you know, where it's just cool. Let's do that next. Yeah. <laughs> Sculptured? Well, I mean, I, I have demos for sculptured, but uh, what's yeah. the uh, following question? <laughs> oh, okay, I mean, I, I have, I have plenty, I have lots of demos, but um, I was working on the sculpted stuff, and then Agalock always takes priority. Yeah. Um, and then when I was invited to do the Soul Invictus record, that also took priority because I'm such a big fan of Soul Invictus, and I wanted to be a part of that. So I put it on the back burner, and now it's really just, uh, you know, maybe now I can get back to work on it a little bit as well. So sculpture is always, I never say it's over, it's just always there when I have time, you know. Okay. As for me, you know, I've been, I've been kind of wanting to ex explore more of the solo stuff. Okay. Uh, maybe release that cassette, the latest cassette on CD or vinyl and do some more shows and stuff like that. Plus, I just put out uh, the follow-up album, um, with myself and Matthias yeah. Grisseau yeah. called Ore, and that just came out, and uh, oh, we're gonna do a third one, I think. Yeah. So, you know, there's always things. I, there's always ideas that I have for projects and stuff, and sometimes those ideas become Agalock songs, and sometimes they become something else, so, mm -hmm. yeah. I think the next sculpture so far with the songs I have are somewhere between the complexity of embodiment and the more straightforwardness of Apollo Ends. Um, I'm not going to use the same drummer this time, so I feel like the, the drumming on embodiment, which I'm, I love, was very maximalist. It was too much. It was a lot. Yeah. And so I kind of want to simplify a little bit and find a nice balance between those two records and try to find a kind of middle ground. And in terms of themes, I've just been really focusing a lot of song titles and ideas on um, in between spaces. So I may resurrect a title I had called a liminal phase at some point, but I'm really interested in margins and peripheries and things that are neither this or that. They're somewhere in between, sort of gray area. Those, those concepts start to take shape. I mean, I think both of us are, are sort of visionaries in terms of we make an album that's obsessed with a certain collection of ideas and themes, right? It's not like a concept album, like a King Diamond set or something, but there's things that you just, as an artist, you start thinking about and ruminating on over time and they find their way in. So for Sculptured, it's all been about margins and sort of in-betweenness and liminality. That's what I'm really fascinated by right now. It's hands down our best album. I mean, I'm sure everyone would agree or disagree with that, but for me as an artist, uh, you know, the latest album is always the most important. And uh, for me, even a year later, it's still as satisfying as it was when it, we finished it. That hasn't always been the case with our albums. I was dissatisfied with Marrow of the Spirit. I was extremely dissatisfied with yeah. Ashes Against the Grain. Um, but this... That's curious. Huh? That's curious. Not really, <laughs> when you consider my taste. but oh. um, And the conditions, that that's a whole story. But anyway... Um, but yeah, this was the first time in several years that I was actually 100% satisfied with the record, and it still stands up. And I think that has some of my best lyrics. It has some of our best song arrangements, song, you know, and, uh, musicianship, the production, I mean, yeah. everything. It's just it came together perfect. Okay, so you are totally satisfied. Absolutely. Uh, this yeah, for you? yeah, I'm very satisfied with it. I haven't listened to it. You know, for a, for a while now because we've been playing it live. Yeah. But I'm finding that the songs continue to sort of take shape, and that to me is always a, a good indication of, of good songwriting that you can still sort of play with your phrasing and a little bit of the melodies and you know work with the rhythms. I mean, I do things differently live than I did on the record when I recorded this. So the songs are always evolving and breathing, and I, I'm I'm really happy with the production finally. I think that's the best production yeah. I've had in my life. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and as far as the songwriting, I mean, a lot of people have complained. I've seen complaints that it doesn't sound like Agalog, but what band has songs that sound like yeah. Dark Matter Gods, for instance? You know, yeah. that's clearly our work. Well, you know, we're artists because, I mean, at least from yeah, me, I, mean, I agree with you. You know, we, 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 we create in order to change. You know, I don't right. want to stay the same. I mean, uh, 
point. You, you grow and evolve the more you learn. And the more you grow as, also personally, the more you grow. I'm not the same person I was when I was 18. Right, yeah. You know? But you've done it also in the past, so. Mm -hmm. nice challenge for him you know it's like because we're not a typical Billy Anderson band it it kind of forces him to try different things that you know he wanted to do. I think that goes both ways. Yeah, exactly I mean he's yeah I mean he's suggested stuff to us we've never tried before and it was great so you know. Yeah. And just personality wise he's great because he's on tour as our sound guy and <coughs> oh so he's a fifth yeah. member of the band really at this point. Yeah. Um, and it's also like, you know, uh, I can't speak for John, but I can speak for myself and Jason, the bass player, that we're, yeah. a lot of the records he's done we're huge, huge fans of. You know, so like Neurosis through Silver and Blood, uh, Mr. Bungle, Disco Blonde, things like my favorite records of all time. So there's there's always still this shred of like, I'm in awe of him, you know, like I'm, a, <laughs> I'm the fangirl or fan, or whatever you want to say, you know. Uh, I'm starstruck sometimes that it's an honor to work with him because he has such a nice resume. Well, the serpent and the sphere uh, references macrocosms and microcosms, the, the, the outer space and the inner space uh, together. So, you know, you have universe, but you also have the universe inside a cell. And that's, that's really, it's, it's the uh, duality of those two um, ideas together. And, and, um, and a lot of the lyrics uh, sort of explore those ideas. And uh, that's basically the, the whole of the, of the title. Yeah, I mean, he, you know, I think the history of Agalog has always been, you know, um, it's always been John's baby in terms of the themes and the ideas and lyrics, yeah. of course. And I've never really intervened with the lyrics unless he asked me something specific. Yeah. You know? I know. And for me, I hate to reduce it to like I'm just here for the music, but that, that's what's most rewarding for me is when is writing and composing and playing. So in many ways, I am just here for the music, and whatever John does, I always find very interesting. And I do think about it, and probably my own interpretations of it and whatnot. But um, um, it's it's kind of I kind of leave it up to John where those things go. You know? So uh, I think what he said is is what I've always read and discussed before. No. No. Um, in this way, I mean, uh, I mean, I referenced these themes on Meryl the Spirit. I've referenced these themes on Ashes Against the Grain. In a subtle way. Um, in fact, a lot of the, the the lyrics on the new album are continuations of lyrics from uh, Meryl the Spirit. Like the the idea, the overall idea of the Serpent and the Sphere is kind of kind of stems from the lyrics of Into the Pain and Gray, which is about the world inside a plant cell. Which, if you think about it, isn't really different from the sort of nature themes we've always we've no, always no. had. I mean, instead of, you know, obvious nature worship, whatever, um, we have more of a, it's more of an internal, like the, 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 the core of nature, and talking about that kind of thing. Um, but, you know, yeah, I mean, it's not that different. I've been interested in this stuff for years, so... It's just this is the first time I've d I've decided, yeah, let's just go with this theme yeah. all the way instead of just have one song or whatever that references it. So I mean, the, the new album's not a concept album per se. Yeah, no, it's like what we're saying. Like yeah, a collection it, of ideas and impressions and thoughts and pictures and images that yeah. kind of go here. Mm -hmm. But all of our albums have a theme, mm -hmm. you know. Yes. I, I, you know, we grew up in the album age where it's like we think in terms of albums and we think in terms of a statement being made. Yeah. And then of a concept, but I think of the album as a complete work <coughs> as a whole. You know, like you might think of a symphony of movements or something. Mm -hmm. So, um, and so I think that's how we always tend to think of the album as a, as as, a, as an entity in itself. Well, that's not true. That is abs yeah. that's absolutely not true. <laughs> Neither of us could do what he does. No, I mean, he's really a trained yeah. classical guitar. I, mean, yeah. I, I can do it like half. 
Yeah. Uh, he's, I mean, he's a trained vocal guitarist. Those, so those, I, those I mean, tracks were done in one take. Yeah. Oh. Well, I mean, he did yeah. a lot of obsessive, compulsive, like... No, but what but, I'm saying is... But it's they, like, each one were done, and there was no editing. Right, right. It's like, when we, when we, in the past, when we've done nylon string sections, it's track by track. Oh. He does... Yeah. He'll, he he wants, he'll make but, it sound like three guitars at once. I can't do that. I don't yeah. think you can do that. Yeah. So. yeah, yeah. That's great. Yeah. No. no he's, he's a good friend of ours. Yeah, exactly. So aside from just pity... <laughs> <laughs> No, he's a good friend, and uh, you know he's come on tour with us. He did merch for us a few times too. Yeah, and and, and uh, Muscox has opened for us. And he's oh, a very okay. small person. He fits very well into like small spaces. You know, that's bands, not true at all. Sorts of things. <laughs> he's a very small guy. So you know, okay. but no, yeah, he's he's an expert at classical guitar. And 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 I yeah, and I wanted, I had this vision of having these true classical interludes between mm -hmm. sections okay. of music on this album. Especially with the oscillation effects and stuff yep. going on. Okay. I'm not really as well read as Don is. Um, I don't. I don't reference literature as much. I, it all comes from my my heart, my my mind, my imagination. So I can't say that I have any to, that that really inspire my lyrics you know okay but uh apart from that so which are um i like cormac mccormick mccarthy you know um i like you know i like some of like the american exp uh, existentialist uh, writers transalist yeah transalist yes. writers um but i like i said i don't i don't reference that okay. i don't i'm not yeah, I don't really care. But we do reference that. We do, but it's, <laughs> that's, 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 that comes from you. That yeah, comes see, that's the irony. He writes the lyrics, but yeah. you know, he, like the yeah. Emerson, the Emerson quote, yeah. the Thoreau quote. That's that's just for me because that's what I do. Um, so in terms of Agalock, I you know, it started out early on uh, when we were sort of thinking about the ideology of Agalock, or whatever you, know, you want to call it. And I was an assistant that, like, you know, because we grew up in the Columbia Gorge in the Pacific Northwest. Beautiful landscapes that can rival Norway easily. Easily. And we were like, look, you know, look, people might say we sound European, but we're, we were kind of a proudly American band because we stuck out like a sore thumb. Yeah. There's no one else doing that kind of music. So I said, well, let's if we're going to quote any philosophers, let's not quote European philosophers. Let's yeah. quote American philosophers. So, for me, well, you know, a major author has been Thoreau, and I said, well, Thoreau's the perfect guy. So Emerson as well. And the American transcendentalists have been a big influence on me personally, how I live my life, and how I think about material possessions and how to live deliberately and meaningfully, okay? And uh, I find a lot of stuff fits with more appreciation for nature that Aglock's always played with. Right. In the same way that um, some of like, for instance, uh, William Blake's writing, can, yeah. you can draw a straight line to Native American folklore, you know? Mm, there's a, right. there's yeah, a very similar, too, yeah. similar uh, red thread there. Yeah, because growing up in the Pacific Northwest, <coughs> you're surrounded by Native American culture. It's everywhere. Yeah. I, mean, I grew up constantly around Indian, res Indian reservations, and I mean, we always get, we always buy fish from Native Americans, and it was like pretty much there. The culture totem poles all over the place. Yeah. So there, there was an indigenous population that I think the indigenous population's love for nature and how they thought about nature and integrated it. I think we felt some sort of kinship with in a way. Yeah. Uh, well, actually, I would recommend going to Northern Washington State. To the yeah, whole. yeah. I mean, I think in Portland, Seattle, those two cities are beautiful. Yeah, yeah. And I mean, you've got our train ride. You've got the, the the peninsula in Washington State that's just beautiful yeah. for us, and really? and then you've got the Columbia River Gorge that he had mentioned, um, and a lot of Eastern Oregon is very interesting too. You've got the Painted Hills, you've got volcanic landscapes and things like that that are really yeah. otherworldly. Yeah, because yeah. I think Europeans rarely go to the West Coast. I think it's a yeah. long plane flight to the U.S. But the Northwest is, is, is <coughs> deeply underrated by most European tourists. You know, because they, if they go to the West Coast, they go to Los Angeles, they go to San Francisco. But yeah, yeah, I say yeah. Portland, Seattle, that area, the peninsula, beautiful. Yeah.
you want me to go? You're thinking. Yeah, I'm thinking. Um, I'm well, really, you know, yeah. okay, here's my favorite thing I do right now on tour. You notice these windows here? Mm -hmm. What I love to do is I sit in my bunk <clears> at nighttime and I'm trying to fall asleep and the bus is moving and I see a lot of strange corporate logos from European corporations. <laughs> I don't know what they do, what they mean. The best thing I like to listen to is like ambient music, electronica, okay. or like uh, Tangerine Dream. Yeah, yeah. So, sure. like, uh, damn, a lot of Tangerine Dream on my iPod right now. A lot of uh, Conrad Schnitzler and that, a lot of German crowd rock, uh, Grobschnitt. That's what I've been really getting into. And in fact, we're going to, you know, whenever we go to Germany, we go to a record store and buy up all the stuff that the Germans don't that I like create. They don't understand why we like it. So, I would say Klaus Schulz, uh, Conrad Schnitzler, Tangerine Dream are three that I listen to a lot right now. What about metal, though? Metal? Yeah, yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs> no, okay, metal, I would say the <clears throat> Friends of Ours, a band called Alda, mm -hmm. have a new record called Passage. Yeah. That's very, very yeah. good. Um, in terms of metal, what are I listening to? I should be listening to Cattle Decapitation. I kind of feel like that, in terms of modern death metal, they're a favorite band I actually really like. And they're melodic and interesting, and they're not brutal, but I like what they do. Listen to old stuff. Oh, and that was, and that's 1996 was like the last year I cared for. <laughs> they stormed the lights, Bane, and yeah. <laughs> there's nothing to be anything better than that. I'm always interested in what Iron Maiden is doing. I'll always listen to the next Maiden record. Okay. Um, yeah, I mean, following what he said, um, a lot of the stuff I've been listening to while you know riding on the bus. Mm -hmm. uh, there's this band called Tycho. Uh, they're kind of an uh, ambient electronic project and it's just fantastic it's perfect it's just it, it it just goes perfectly with the movement oh. um and then a lot of rush um it's like my favorite band so i'm constantly listening to rush and um i've been on a real aha fa like fix lately just, i just love scoundrel days just listen to it almost every day um and as far as metal um i love master's hammer they're one of my favorite bands um I'm a huge fan of, like when I want when I want to listen to black metal, I'll listen to stuff like Archgoat. I'll listen to Blasphemy. I'll listen to um, Bestial Warlust. Those kind of those that to me that's that's the real oh, the real shit. Yeah. Um, I don't really like a lot of fluffy black metal um, okay. <laughs> keyboards or any of that bullshit. I hate folk metal with a fucking passion. <laughs> yeah, because we get lumped in with that. Yeah, yeah. I've, I've never we've never considered. I mean. We're influenced by that folky-ish type appeal, yeah, but I think yeah. when we say folk too, we also think more in terms of neo folk. The yeah, 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 the whole body of sounds. Not, not, not yeah. flutes and bagpipes. Yeah, not, not that folk right. metal, but um, neo folk. Yeah. The other thing I should say too is I'm a big fan of Italian prog, and I listen to tons of Italian, like Lorme, yep. Musa Rosenbach, the Cane della Bate, Bacco della Chiosacoso, Frigato from Yamaconi. So I listen to a lot of Italian prog because you guys have an amazing musical history that I don't know. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah, that's right. <laughs> um, yeah, another band that I've been listening to, they're, they're a metal band technically, but not really. Um, it's, a, it's an old band called Thought Industry, and I've just mm -hmm. been listening to okay. all their albums. Just love that stuff. You know, and stuff like Voivod yeah. also, you know, so. What are you listening to? Yeah. Uh, me? Yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, recently, uh, I was listening to the new Pest Noir album. Uh, great oh, record, I, I great that record. Okay, I got great that record. on my phone too. And uh, uh, speaking about 2015 releases, mm -hmm. you know, uh, the new Dudem's Guard album from Norway. I, heard it. I have that, I haven't checked it out yet. No? It's on my phone. And uh, Enslaved, <coughs> Mac from, from Greece, mm -hmm. and um, Galar from Norway, and uh, some, some of them. Uh, it's Morbus Kron. Morbus Kron, great uh, band. Megalop. Course. Migwa, Migwa, Migwa. Like, yeah. yeah, they are. Which they're, they're releasing their new album in a couple yeah, of months. Exactly. Which, which, which was funny because um, when when Crown canceled, one of the first bands I thought to open for us in Poland yeah. was Migwa, but yeah. like it was too short notice. Yeah. Um, actually, the new, I, the new Yob, yeah, it's good stuff. Um, but when I was when I first, I I actually came to Europe earlier than those, these guys did, so I was hanging out at the Eisenwald Records. Head headquarters and uh, there's two albums that they're putting out or they just put out that are just fantastic. Uh, one of them is an album by a band called Grimoire from uh, Canada yeah. and another one is, uh, I'm not sure if where they're from, but a band called Vargnaut and uh, like I mean, the over yeah like the Overdemo and it's funny because the album is kind of like, it's like if, it's like Bergtop part two but with 
more stuff. It's I like it was no, this is like this is like imagine Bergta with Arvo Parrot parts. Oh, that sounds great. Yeah, that's that, it's an it's an amazing record. So oh, we should play it. Yeah, you have to ask Nico. <laughs> <laughs> so now I ask you if you have to spot as some records that came out in 2015. Actually, I think I think those two. I just mentioned two. <laughs> yeah, 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 that's good. it. You, you, you agreed with me with, uh, with the last. Pest in the pest and war, those, there's three right there. Like <laughs> I'm curious to hear the new Masters Hammer seven inch. I'm always yeah. interested in what they do. It's one of my favorite bands all the way back in the day, and they've always been interesting. They're one of those bands that just doesn't give a fuck, and I love that. <laughs> okay. So, well, we are at the very end of the interview. Thank you very much. And now it's your turn uh, if you want to, if you desire to tell something freely to the to our audience and the Italian audience as well. Now you can. Freely. Um, yeah. <laughs> you guys have amazing cinema. Oh, yes. Amazing music. If I could go anywhere, I say this to my wife, I had to bail time. If I could do anything, I would transport myself back to Rome in 1972. Okay. <laughs> I love movies from that period, so I'm a big fan of it. I like to say hello to, um, uh, fuck his name completely escaped me. Maro? No, well, yeah, Maro Berti, yeah, Maro from Berti Canaan. Maro Berti Records, Canaan. And, uh, uh, Simone from Spiritual Front. Okay. Uh, big fan yes. of Spiritual Front. Yeah, Spiritual Front. Uh, yeah, sure. Now. Yeah.